This video assumes that you already know how to use your sequencer, specifically how it instantiates plugins, how it routes audio and MIDI data, and how it performs real-time track bounces. This video also assumes that you've connected Receptor to your computer or computer network using Ethernet and configured that network properly. If not, please see the Receptor networking videos to learn how this is done. First, make sure Uniwire is enabled on your Receptor. On its front panel, press the Setup button and rotate the top display knob until the Uniwire parameter is displayed. If the parameter is currently disabled, then rotate the bottom display knob to enable it. Open a new live file and click the Plugin Device Browser button. Navigate to the folder with all your VST plugins, and then open the Muse folder and drag the Uniwire Instrument plugin to Live's Device Drop area. When the Uniwire plugin appears, make sure it's communicating with the correct receptor. If you only have one receptor, it will automatically communicate with it. If you have multiple receptors, select the appropriate one from this list. Set the desired latency. By default, the smallest possible value is two times Live's plugin buffer size. Since I currently have Live set to a buffer size of 128, the smallest possible Uniwire latency setting is 256 samples. Next, use the multi-bank and multi-patch menus to select the desired patch, in this case, Roaring Organ. In the MIDI track that you just created, make sure that your MIDI controller is enabled, and then click that track's ARM recording button, then play your MIDI keyboard. The MIDI data is transmitted over Uniwire to Receptor where it plays the selected patch then sends the audio back into Live over Uniwire. Click the wrench icon to open the Uniwire plugin's edit window and audition different patches. When you find a patch you like, record it in live by clicking the record button within the desired clip. You can now play back that loop. If you want to bounce this track to disk, first create a destination audio track by clicking Live's Insert menu and selecting Insert Audio Track. In this new track, open the Audio From menu and select the MIDI track that you just recorded. Then click the Audio Track's ARM recording button. In one of that Audio Track's clip slots, click the Record button. This will bounce the MIDI track down to an audio file. If you double-click the clip that you just recorded, you'll see that, indeed, the Uniwire track has been bounced to live. You can solo this track, and, sure enough, you will hear only the bounced audio track. You can also use Receptor as an external effects processor over Uniwire. For this example, delete your original MIDI track so that your sequence has only the audio clip that you've just recorded. From Live's plugin device browser, drag the Uniwire Effects plugin on top of the audio track. For this example, you'll target a specific receptor channel. Specifically, you'll send the data to receptor channel 1 for processing. You can do this by clicking directly on receptor channel 1 in the miniature receptor graphic. Since you want to configure an effects chain in receptor, you'll need to open its edit window, so click the Launch Receptor Remote button to do so. Control-click on the multi-patch to load a blank configuration. Then, in Receptor Channel 1, click the Source Selector and choose Uniwire as the audio sound source. It might be helpful to start playing the audio file in live so that you can hear what's happening. Right now, you're hearing your track running through Receptor and it's completely unaffected since you haven't assigned any effects yet. Click the FXA plugin selector and choose Classic Phaser and then load a patch such as Old Radio. 
Next, click the FXB plugin selector and choose MDA Leslie, and then load a patch called Fast. You can bypass either or both of these effects to hear the effect that they have on the sound. Save this patch as a single patch by clicking the Save File button in the single slot. Choose a bank to save it in, and then a location. Name it. Click OK, then Close. Go back to the Uniwire plugin in Live and click the Update Bank Patch List button. Your newly created single patch appears in the single patch list and you can select it. You can hear different effects by selecting different patches in this window. When you save your sequence, it will automatically recall this patch whenever you reopen the sequence, so there's no more messing about with MIDI bank select and program change messages when you use Uniwire. If you like, you can now bounce this process track to disk using the same method discussed previously. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, you can have multiple Uniwire instrument tracks and multiple Uniwire effects tracks. You can target each track to a specific channel or to a specific plugin within each Uniwire instantiation, and you can bounce the whole thing down to your sequencer, all without detriment to your host computer's CPU, without altering your plugin based workflow, and without any audio or MIDI cables. There is a wealth of pertinent information in the Uniwire training videos and even more in your Uniwire documentation. So spend a little time with these informational sources, and you'll soon be reaping the rewards of a Uniwire based studio.